Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 23rd day of July, and it is Tuesday, and today's topic is titled, So You Have Problems? <laughs> Question, or, uh, exclamation point. And we all have problems in our lives, and so um, if you say you don't, well, I'm sure you probably have something in your life that's not right, and um, pray pray um, that, uh, that God will help you with the, those uh, problems there. And amen. All right, so we'll get into that topic here in a few minutes. Uh, but first, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today, if he's not already. And hope you'll trust him today and believe on him and realize you're a sinner and you're dead and trespasses and sin and on your way to dying and perishing in your sin and end up in hellfire, which God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance and put their faith and trust in him and that includes you, whoever is uh, watching out there, uh, whether you're saved or lost. And if you're saved, hope that this is uh, um, this broadcast is helping and a blessing and uh, encourages and, and edifies you to keep going and to keep learning God's word. So, amen. And I uh, also wanted to uh, let you know I was uh, at this uh, uh, grand opening at, of uh, this um, chicken place uh, where they sell chicken fingers. I'm sure you've probably heard of it before. Um, it's titled, or it's called Raising Cane's. And uh, there was this uh, race car driver there. Uh, her name was Tony uh, Br uh, Bradinger. And so she's a race car driver and she was there. So I was able to uh, hand her a gospel tract and, and all that. So pray for her and that she would read it and, and not just uh, toss it away. And she would see her need for uh, Jesus as her personal Savior if she's not saved already. So pray for her and all those that were able to get uh, the gospel tracts that I handed out today and uh, see the um, shirt that I was wearing uh, wore a Jesus Say shirt, so pray for all those that uh, uh, took tracks and all that um, at uh, that event there. Uh, so, amen. All right, so I just wanted to um, have you pray for her and all those um, that took tracks and saw uh, my t shirt and, and hat and stuff. So, and amen that uh, somebody would come to trust Jesus or Savior Day. Uh, so, all right, so I just wanted to uh, mention that to you. And now let's go ahead and we'll get into the scripture song now. And today is the 23rd and Hebrews 1.8 is the scripture song. And so let's go ahead and look at Hebrews chapter 1 and get some context here. Alright, so let's see here. Hebrews chapter 1. And let's see here. Alright, so there's 14 verses here. So we'll read the entire chapter including the scripture song verse uh, uh, in it so here we go so uh, book of Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 says God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they uh, for unto which of the angels said he at any time thou art my son this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the son he saith, uh, he saith thy throne o god is for ever and ever a scepter of righteousness uh, is the scepter of thy kingdom uh, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore god even thy god hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows and thou lord in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thine hands they shall perish but Thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be 
changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said uh, he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to, uh, sent forth to minister <clears throat> for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And that's uh, the end of chapter 1 there. And it goes into chapter 2, so... <clears throat> Alright, so that was chapter 1 there. And now let's go ahead and sing the scripture song together with Brother Dean and Sister Patty on the CD. So here we go. Hebrews 1.8 But unto, unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Right. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Amen. All right, so put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those again towards the end of the broadcast. And put that aside there, and let's grab the Bible and read today's Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 23. And then we'll get into the Baptist bread topic for today. So, Proverbs 23. And let's see here. Verse 1 says, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler... Consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat. If thou be a man given to appetite, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up, and loose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Remove not the old landmark, and Enter not into the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. Apply thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver him, his soul from hell. My son, if thine heart be Wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Amen. Uh, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine-bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and sell it not. Also wisdom, and instruction, and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. 
thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. My son, give my, uh, me, my son, give me thy heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of, the, of a mast. Uh, they have stricken me, shall thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. Oh, so don't even look upon that uh, wine there. And so... All right, so that's the warning about drinking strong drinking wine, so don't do it. Amen. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into the uh, Baptist bread for today, titled, So You Have Problems. And this is for Tuesday, July 23rd, and we have Philippians 3.10b, and it says, That I may know him and the fellowship of his sufferings. Philippians 3.10b, so let's look at Philippians 3 uh, here. And get some context really quick. So Philippians chapter 3. Alright, so Philippians chapter 3. And what did you say it was chapter 3 verse 10? Alright, so let's see. So let's go down here and uh, try to see what we can start here. Alright, so... Verse 1 says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. So he says that in verse 1, and then verse 2 says, Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, for we are not, excuse me, we, for we are the circumcision which wor uh, worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Right? So shouldn't have confidence in the flesh, uh, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more, Paul says here, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Uh, for, yeah, for Christ. Uh, yea, doubtless, and I could, uh, excuse me, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And then verse 10 uh, is the passage from the topic today. Uh, 10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And let's see. See if I need to go down any further. All right, so verse 12, we'll just go ahead and read the rest of this here. So verse 12 continues on. It says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
Uh, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in any thing yet ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample, for many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Hallelujah. So that's the entirety of chapter 3 there. And it's needed to read the whole entire thing so you get the idea of the chapter there. All right. So now let's get into the topic here uh, for this uh, 23rd day of July, 2024, titled, So You Have Problems. And Philippians 3.10b again says that I may know him and the fellowship of his sufferings. And today's author is R.P. That would be the initials for Randy Pike. And he is deceased from Greenville, uh, South Carolina. So let me read you what he wrote today. He says here in Philippians 3.10, Paul is rejoicing that he has been called to suffer, as all believers have been, for the sake of God's truth and righteousness not to play some part in his personal salvation. Uh, Psalm 88 was penned by the Hebrew musician and song leader uh, Haman. Uh, in ancient Jewish uh, poetry, it is usually called a song of distress. The 18th, uh, excuse me, the 18 verses of this peculiar psalm uh, tremble with the themes of suffering, distress, and sorrow some old wise man said that every child of God must, over the course of time, or excuse me, course of life, walk through all of these 18 verses. For the Lord leads us in this way. It speaks of unanswered prayers, verses 1 and 2, of many troubles, verses 3, or verse 3, of wishing to die, verse four, verses 4 and 5, of being in darkness and feeling cut off from God, verse 6, of suffering many afflictions and sinking in the depths of despair, verse 7, of estrangements of friends, verse 8, of mourning, verse 9, and of sorrows from youthful days upward, verse 15. Who would believe that God directed Haman along such paths? I do. He writes in big bold letters. I have traveled many of these myself, he says. I can relate to this song of the Hebrew lyr lyricist. Um, perhaps God is even trying to teach us to sing it along the pathway of life. What say you? Mm. So, all right, good topic there. Um, so, amen. All right, so um, you have problems, right? And we all have problems, and we uh, take them to the Lord and know that we are um, having those times of suffering and tribulation and all that in our lives and some more than others so but the lord will help get you through it and amen i encourage you to read uh that uh, psalm there psalm 88 that uh, he was talking about there all right so that's the end of the baptist bread and now let's go ahead and open up the daily strength volume 2 book as we are continuing through this week on the topic of leading and today is day 171 tuesday titled leaders can influence followers unexpectedly. We have John 21 verses 1 through 3. And it says here in verse 1 of John 21. After these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples, Simon Peter, saith unto them, I go a-fishing. 
they say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. And I encourage you to read the rest of that chapter there, and what happens after that. And so now let's get into the introductory thoughts here. It says, A leader who has no followers is no leader. All right, so leader must have followers to be a leader. So a leader who has no followers is no leader. The disciples were given some explicit instructions uh, from the Lord. Like each of us, they had a responsibility to do God's work. Yet Simon Peter chose instead to go fishing. Uh, his decision influenced others to move in the same direction, uh, away from the will of God. The disciples blindly followed his lead. The Lord had admonished Peter to strengthen his brethren, Luke twenty-two, thirty-two. But under Peter's leadership, the disciples became weak through disobedience. Perhaps Peter never desired to be a leader. He may have been satisfied to simply follow others, but God knew what was best for Peter and the other apostles. When Peter made the wrong decisions, he had others that he negatively affected. Oh, yikes. <laughs> Every leader must consider that the direction, the direction he chooses will lead others in his footsteps. Hmm. So perhaps God is making you or, you or I a leader. And so if he's making us a leader, we should um, uh, guide our um, followers in the right direction, in the right footsteps, and, and all that. So let's take heed to that. <laughs> Amen. Good introductory stuff there. And now for devotional thoughts for children. Of course, you can apply this to adults also. It says here, God made uh, Jeroboam king over the ten tribes of Israel. Instead of leading the people to worship the true God, he chose to set up two calves of gold and told the people that these were the gods which brought them out of Egypt. His decision caused those people to eventually be taken captive out of their land, never to return. Mm. Uh, now for everyone says, who is following in your footsteps? What kind of influence are you having in the lives of others? Uh, does it please the Lord when others choose to follow your path? Hmm. Have you made wrong decisions only to find that your decisions influence others to likewise make the same unwise decisions? How can you encourage them to go in a different direction? <laughs> so... So somebody's always following you, and you're a leader of somebody out there, and I'm a leader of somebody, so let's be careful that we don't lead them in the wrong uh, direction and, and all that, and, and cause them to make unwise decisions. So <laughs> let that be a lesson to all of us. Amen. All right, so that was it for devotional thoughts. And now for prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to help you lead others the right way. And then it also says here, ask the Lord to help your leadership strengthen other believers and then the song from the book was titled holy lord god i love thy truth but as i said yesterday couldn't uh, was not able to find a um, hymn for that one in the book so i chose a different hymn uh, for the second hymn today so and the first hymn i couldn't find an instrumental for that one either so i will just read you the stanzas and uh if there's a story i don't think there's a story for this one either so uh, so we'll do that one, and then we'll do the second one here that I picked for today. So let's get to this first one. And this one is titled, With Gratitude. And this is another one of these, the Thanksgiving of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song. Uh, hymn 811 in the book. And this is written by Samuel uh, Deacon, D-E-A-C-O-N, uh, Deacon, who lived from 1746 to 1816. And then Lowell Mason, who lived from 1792 to 1872. And no story for this one, so I'll give, read you the stanzas and then give you the references. And then we'll move on to the second hymn that I chose for today. So stanza one says, In gratitude's a sin, detestable indeed, there's nothing excellent akin to this eternal weed. Stanza two, most evils have to show necessity or use, but base in uh, gratitude has no occasion or excuse or excuse stanza three i often find the fruit 
of this detested tree, yea, can perceive it taking root, O cursed weed, in me. Stanza 4. The greatest gifts bestowed upon the mortal race are swallowed without thanks to God where this has taken place. Stanza 5. Where Jesus kindly gives a cure to leprous men, he neither thanks nor praise receives from nine of all the ten. Stanza 6. How ready to complain of what they undergo, but tis too much to turn again their gratitude to show. Hmm. Stanza 7. How much does this appear in Gentile and in Jew? Doth not the Lord discern it here, in me perhaps, or in or you? And stanza 8. Oh, let us search and see, and banish from our breast this cursed weed, and ever be with gratitude possessed. Yeah, so... All right, so let's have gratitude for the Lord more and all that and be thankful for what he does for us and, and amen. So, all right, so for stanza one, we have 1 Thessalonians 5.18 and for stanza two, we have Proverbs 6.30 and Psalm 92.1. Stanza three, we have 2 Timothy 3.2 and Hebrews 12.15. And then stanza four, we have Ephesians 5.20. Stanza 5, we have Luke 17.12 and Luke 17.15. Stanza 6 is Luke 17.13 and Luke 17.18. Stanza 7 is Romans 3.9 and Jeremiah 17.9-10. And then stanza 8 is Psalm 139.23 and Colossians 3.17. So that's the end of the first hymn there. And we're going to go back a little ways to the second hymn titled I've Found a Friend and this is hymn 513 in the book here and this is one of the preservation of the Saint Hymns a spiritual song written by James G. Small who lived from 1817 to 1888 and then excuse me George C. Stebbins who lived from 1846 to 1945 and there is a story for this one so four stanzas here so let's see hopefully they have all four stanzas on the video here so. i found a friend no oh, such a friend he loved me ere i knew him he drew me with the cords of love and thus he bound me to him and Round my heart still closely twined those ties which not can sever for I am his and he is mine forever and forever I found a friend oh such a friend he bled he died to save me and not alone the gift of life but his own self he gave me Not that I have my own I call I hold it for the giver My heart, my strength, my life, my all Are his and his forever I found a friend, oh such a friend All power to him is given to guard me on my onward course and bring me safe to heaven the eternal glories gleam afar to never my faint endeavor so now to watch to work to war and then to rest forever I found a friend, oh, such a friend, so kind and true and tender, so wise a counselor and guide, so mighty a defender. From him who loves me now so well, what power my soul can sever, shall life or death or earth or hell 
though I am his forever. Amen. All right. So good hymn there. And now let me read you the story here at the bottom of the page and then give you the references here. So it says here, a minister in England tells the story of a young man who visited a cottage prayer meeting at the conclusion of the meeting. Uh, the young man inquired if the small group would sing this song for him. After the first stanza, the young man began to weep and gave his heart to the Lord. He left a letter as he departed the next morning, which read, in part, I ask you to sing that hymn because it was a favorite of my darling sister who is waiting for me at the gates in heaven. I have now promised to meet her there. Oh, praise the Lord. And so that's the story there. And let me give you references. So stanza one, we have First John 4.19, uh, Hosea 11.4, Romans 8.39, and Song of Solomon 2.16. Stanza two, we have Romans 5.8, Titus 2.14, 1 Corinthians 6.19, and Romans 11.36. Stanza 3 is Matthew 28, 18, Psalm 33, 3, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and Hebrews 4, 9. And then stanza 4, we have Isaiah 9, 6, Romans 8, 35, and Romans 8, 38. So that is the end of the second hymn for today. And now we put this to tomorrow's hymn here. All right, so put that aside now and we'll do the scripture songs one more time. And then we'll wrap it up after that. So here we go. Yesterday's was the 22nd. So here we go. John 15, 13. Greater, Greater love, love hath no man than this, that a that man laid down his, his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man than this greater love greater love the man laid down his life for his friends greater love greater love greater love greater Praise the Lord. Now today is one more time. Hebrews 1 8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. That's right. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. That's right. Praise the Lord. All right, so that is about it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topic for the Baptist bread and then the um, scripture 
uh, verse for the Daily Strength Volume 2 book, and then the hymn for tomorrow, and all that. So tomorrow will be the 24th, and Isaiah 51, 6 is the Scripture song passage, and we'll go over uh, chapter 51 in its entirety, and uh, give you an outline of the chapter there, and all that. So it says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. So that's Isaiah 51, 6 for the scripture song tomorrow. And then the topic for the Baptist bread uh, book is titled Living in the Last Days. And First Peter 4, 7 is the passage. And tomorrow's author is D.H. That would be the initials for uh, D.H. That would be uh, Brother David uh, Halberg, uh, Academic and Dean of Providence Baptist College in Elgin, Illinois. So he's the author for tomorrow's topic, Living in the Last Days. So we'll go over that tomorrow there. And then the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. There is no devotional tomorrow, just a passage. So we're still continuing on this topic of leading. And tomorrow is church night, one se- day 172, and Proverbs 16.29 is the passage for tomorrow. So that will be uh, the Daily Strength, Volume 2, there, from that book. And then the uh, hymn for tomorrow is titled, Where Are the Nine? And this is another one. He's a Thanksgiving of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song. And this is a really good one here. Eight, uh, this is hymn 812 in the book, and this is written by Philip P. Bliss. Amen. No story for this one, so we will sing that one for the first hymn, and then uh, see about picking out a second hymn for tomorrow. So that's that uh, for that book there. The, this is the dark brown or the dark blue cover, and then there's also a lighter bluish grayish cover, and then a brown cover there for the hymn books. And there's also a leather bound edition, and I think there's still uh, they still have this one here. I'm not sure. I haven't checked the website yet to see if they have this one still available. The with the spinal uh, side backing there which replaces this type of backing so whichever one you prefer uh, you can get one of each if you want um, so those are the different uh, um, the different uh, books they have the different formats that they're in so that's that book and then the daily strength volume 2 book this is uh, by brother Stauffer and brother Ray and there's four volumes to this series of books and they're all available on melodypublications.com is the website there and then for the Scripture Song book and CDs, you can get those online at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And that's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website. They're missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. And uh, uh, Sister Patty is heading back uh, to Florida uh, today, and she will be back tomorrow. I believe Brother Dean has posted up on his Facebook page. And then he's got some exciting news coming up on the next prayer letter. So looking forward to finding out what the exciting news is. So uh, stay tuned for that, and it'll be posted up on his Facebook page and then on the on the website uh, that I just gave you. So so that's for the book there, and then the CDs. This is the back of the cover there that shows all the different uh, uh, months there with the different uh, covers for each month, and then the um, favorite CD down there at the bottom. So that's how you can get those uh, CDs in the book here. So that's that information. And then the Baptist Bread book. This is the cover for this month. And next month, and if you order now, you'll most likely get the one for um, September and October. And that comes in a box of 10, and it's twelve ninety five Every other month, you'll get a box of those. And they come to you um, that way through um, uh, the mail there. If you order them offline, it's uh, baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. It's the second website, and there's other books available to order on that website if you um, check out that website there. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we need to be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed of rightly dividing the word of truth and going to God in prayer and seeking his face and asking him to guide you and direct you in all truth and having a good, solid relationship with the Lord each and every day. And uh, Brother James has been going over a good series of messages on the prayer closet. So if you missed any of those, I encourage you to check those out to learn how to better uh, pray to the Lord and have a relationship with Him um, through prayer, and He wants to hear from us and ready to hear us. And so, um, to showing you how to how to pray pray to the Lord and all that, and and how He answers our prayers and stuff. So, so 
So check those out. And then the um, other book I've been reading, separate broadcast. This is the book of Genesis book, part of the Christ Honoring Commentary series written by my pastor, Brother James W. Knox. And he's the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Deland, Florida. So um, that's this book. And it was a devotional type of commentary where when it gets re-released, it'll be a chapter by chapter, verse by verse commentary. And we've come to this th 23rd day of July. And today's topic is titled, Jacob Prepares to Leave Laban. So that'll be the topic today. And I'll be doing that uh, pre-recorded here in a little bit after I'm done doing the Baptist Bread broadcast here. And you can uh, watch these both on Facebook or YouTube. And the YouTube channel is Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way. And like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting these videos up there. And then for the church uh, website, that's James Knox, uh, it's www.jameswknox.org. Or you can go straight to the store part of the website, which is store.jameswknox.org. And find all the books there and other material, including uh, preaching and teaching of God's word from Brother James and other men that teach during the Sunday school hours. And when Brother James is out of town traveling uh, for different meetings and stuff. So... Um, so that's that information. And then the YouTube channel for the church is James Knox Sermons YouTube channel there. So that's where you can find the video uh, presentation of the sermons. And then the preaching across video um, there of the radio broadcast and video format. So amen. Where Brother James has been going over the book of James uh, there in that uh, uh, broadcast there on the radio program. So, um, and I believe that's about it for today. So thanks for watching and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.